This episode of Ask the 8-Ball Podcast is brought to you by Bebop's Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, the Mullen Team at Remax Revolutions, and F Average, Be Legendary, at F-A-B-L-D-S-M dot com. Hi, I'm Quinn, and I'm listening to my daddy and Cody. <laughs> Facebook rewards longer videos. Really? Mm-hmm. And that's what ours are about 45 minutes to an hour, so. Yeah, like in Instagram and you know, Twitter, obviously there's a limit, but they, uh, shorter is better. Mm-hmm. Obviously TikTok shorter is, yeah. is, is better. But on Facebook, uh, their algorithm pushes stuff that's longer. Really? Like, so, so That probably makes sense why Facebook yeah. I get more. Most views, yeah. Three. Hey, uh, what's up, Cody? Not much, man. What's up with you? Oh, not a lot. What's uh, what's new? I don't know, man. Let's ask the eight wall. All right, let's go, guys. We got the the show with the lowest expectations for our hosts, but the highest expectations <laughs> for our guests. Yes, yes that's, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> that's a very good way. I thought. That should be on ask your Tinder the, profile. <laughs> ask the eight ball with uh, tonight's very special guest, host of Sound Off every Sunday. Yes, for, for a few, yeah, for a while. For a couple of years now, <laughs> one or two years. Uh, let's see, you've won Iowa Sportscaster of the Year, anchored the Emmy, Associated Press, IABNA, Choices Best Sportscaster numerous times. Yeah, n- nobody, Murphy. Can, nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> but here's the real question. All those accolades, are they nearly as important as winning the City View Award? Uh, <laughs> the City View Award you actually see. Oh, like okay. these that's other ones, like fair. right now, I have people in my family that are going, I didn't know you won any of that stuff. So, yeah, Cityville, you pick up because you're, you're like, man, what am I going to read at lunch? Oh, here, I'll get this. Uh, you just get like an email that says, hey, congrats, you won. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, yeah. Yeah, I always look at it, I'm like, what? This place doesn't have the best margarita. This is horse shit. Oh, no. Well, I think hy won best uh, Chinese, food. Chinese food for like Rose 13 now. years in a row. There, there might be a few popular opinions yeah. there. Like, yeah. uh, best hamburger is almost always Bebop's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I'm not gonna argue that. I think they got the best burger. They town. do have a good burger. Yeah. I don't know why. That's a bad example. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's a good burger. Uh, so, uh, you probably don't remember this. I would say it was my freshman year in high school. So I've been thirty years 20, ago. Yeah, like twenty-three <laughs> years ago. Okay. I job shouted you for an entire day. Really? Yeah. For we had to do it for some class I was in. I don't remember what it was. We had to job show somebody, and I think my mom or dad or somebody reached out to you. Maybe my teacher. I don't know who it was. It's Were so you the ago. kid the police had to come get? <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> me. Yes. But I job shouted you, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Oh um, man, really that's like, awesome. I, I mean, you guys just threw me in an editing room for like a little bit before the news. You're like, oh, do this stuff. It was like old footage. Let me play with the stuff, and it was so, so cool. So then I took TV radio in high school. Wow, that's, that's, how, that's how you got into that, huh? Yeah. Okay. I, did, I thought I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like I was always in music stuff. Then yeah. I took TV radio at central. And then I just turned into this profitable career in podcasting. <laughs> yeah, right. So, really, you need hot sauce. You got it. Yeah, we're good to go. So was uh, was that would that have been like Todd Bailey? Was he there at the time? Do you remember who else was with you that day? At, uh, at the uh, at the TV station. station? I don't yeah. remember now. Okay. No, it was through because I went to Roosevelt, so it was through there. But I don't remember what. I don't even remember what class it was for. To be honest oh, with you. well, that's that's good. Our our kids went to Roosevelt. My wife went to Roosevelt, so there you go. I see you checked in at Roosevelt on my birthday last or two Fridays ago. On the fourth, checked in my. I was just creeping on your Facebook. I saw checked in. At oh Roosevelt. yeah, yeah. I, I spoke to a sports journalism class, two of them actually, okay. and and she asked me. She said, "I really don't want to have you come to one class and not the other." And then I found out that one was at eight in the morning and one was at two. Yeah. I was like, oh man, you got me. Cause that, that's eight in the morning. I'm, I'm not too sharp at eight in the morning, but the kids were great. And I also left there, th- like right now they're about to start reading or they probably are already reading Friday Night Lights. Yeah. You know, they're reading the book. Yep. And I thought, man, where was this class when I was in high school? Sports literature? That, yeah. yeah. They oh, God, so they're, they're doing that. some cool stuff like that and over at Central Campus yeah, and I mean, everything. I some, yeah, that was half my day when I was senior year. I didn't know how to do any of that. that so awesome. you self proclaim to be shy. Do you like doing those public speaking events then? Uh, I've, I've gotten better. Okay. Um, more like most things, you get more confident yeah. uh, as time goes on. I am kind of, it's like the opposite of Ed Wilson. <laughs> okay. Like Ed, 
Ed enters the room yeah. and he loves it. Like he yeah. he he feeds off uh, the reactions of people and he wants to talk to everybody and you know he says hello to everybody and I want to be more like that and I've gotten more like that as I've gotten older mm -hmm. but I'm still so it's an odd profession to be in where I'm I'm the, still a little bit self-conscious yeah. sometimes okay. I, I I still can feel uncomfortable like are they staring at me yeah. uh, not, not that I mind it just that I uh, you know do I have a booger in my mouth <laughs> you know that kind of thing so you'd be the shy one of like because like Scott Skipper was on the show yep and he I feel like he just walks in the room and just yep. wants to tell everyone he you know, he's an extrovert he's, too. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, when we go on RV TV, I'll put like uh, we'll go into a after the, the night's done. And it's at eleven o'clock, eleven thirty at night. We'll go to have some drinks with the locals. I'll get I'll get behind Ed and Sipker and just go in there like they're blocking for me because <laughs> they uh, they they do love it. Yeah, they're both extroverts. But uh, somewhere along the way, it's very simple advice. But uh, somebody just gave me the advice of. You know, act as if, okay. you know, act as if you're confident uh, and then you will be after a while, yeah. you know, act as if you're really excited to be there and then you will be. And that's kind of what I had to first do. Okay. I would be comfortable on television because um, I was used to that. And then I'd go into like a kindergarten class and be nervous, <laughs> you know, oh gosh, these kindergarten they kids are judging me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had, I had to get used to the in-person stuff and over time uh just gotten better with it and and more comfortable and then uh i don't know it's at some point when you get old enough um it, it just seems like people are nicer than they ever have been too because now i run into people that like grew up watching me you yeah. know it's more of a nostalgic thing yeah. for them so uh, essentially like, i mean I've, yeah. I've been watching since middle school at least well, i remember and i've always uh, just been like I was like, that's what I was like, that job looks so cool. You talk about sports on TV. That looks awesome. Yeah. And you're in your like, uh, you're in your early 20s now, right? So that's a uh, yeah, while ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, 21 yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I, uh, cheers. Remember calling in to this show. We went Fort Dodge. We qualified for an a, uh, AU Nationals when I was 13 or 14 under. Wow. And so we call, I called, I we're trying to get race funds to, to do it. I called in to sound off and said, hey, can you guys, uh, you know, promote our, fundraiser or whatever and i don't think i ever made the show but i was like on the like they're like interviewing me on the radio i'm like uh can you like all oh, nervous like this and <laughs> yeah just, sure so they're probably like, we can't understand this kid we're not gonna put him on the radio <laughs> back in the uh the tebow days when tebow was the hot commodity in denver there's the only time we were ever on sound off uh when i was working at wellman's west there's a group of us in there on a sunday night after a game and we made a pyramid of all of us doing a tebow pose and it got nice. made it on the screen. I, I'll try to find a picture on the break, but it was it was my claim to fame. I remember that period of time because I uh, I had a photo of myself T-bowing, and I I remember hearing from somebody who was just completely offended that I was right. making fun of his faith or his beliefs. Right. I said, "No, you're overthinking this. It's just we're just doing the pose. It's, yeah, it's, it's not everything is meant so, to be offensive." That's funny because that's my next question was. So Ed's been on the show twice, and he brought in newsletters that people would send him of like, no, no rain in the forecast. Hate, hate mail. Like, hate mail. Is yes. Like, Dumb fuck and, Ed. It's like yeah. what he circled. And he says, no, no rain in the or no rain in the forecast. You fucking asshole. And I'm like, well, he just predicts it. He can't make it. Right. Right. But then he like played his some videos. Some people calling in. Some. He like, has a mess. couple of doozies. I mean, yeah. Once in a while, we'll bug him too when we're all all out together because we're we're good friends and. Be like Ed, you got you got to play it. Yeah. You got to play the book, <laughs> yeah. and and he'll get it out and play it, and it always like brings the house down because you just you just can't believe somebody would be that angry at their guy on television. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's because you know they, they cut into programming, and it's oh that tornado's not coming near me. I'm not worried about <laughs> it. You know, <laughs> okay, well just, how about worried about somebody else besides yeah. your yourself? Do you, but do you he have any yeah. of that for the sport for sports? Not, not. Uh, I don't have them saved on my phone like Ed. There are some <laughs> I wish I had saved over over yeah. the years. I mean, you. I feel like you, most you, of them probably get, go to uh, like Andy or Chris Hassel. I, they both have gotten their share. Like Andy has one of the most classic voicemails ever. We play it on our radio show quite a bit. It's from a Nebraska fan who is so mad at Andy. This is just a couple of years ago, and he starts out kind of calm. He's a, a, a funeral director in uh somewhere in western iowa but he he starts 
and the anger just keeps escalating, <laughs> and then he starts dropping the MFs, and he's just he's just turning it loose. He calls him, he calls Hawkeye fans hillbillies, and he just get, he finally just slams the phone down. And it's funny because the guy goes from like zero to ten, just it's, getting madder and madder. And we we do get some of that. Um, these days, people don't really call yeah. for the most part. If they call, they tend to be old. Yeah. Um, like at least 65. Yeah. Most everybody else will email their displeasure or yeah. reach out on social media because almost everybody is on social media. They yeah. know they can tweet or send you a direct message on Facebook or mm. I get quite a few messages from Instagram. So, so it's rare to get an angry phone call anymore. Right. Yeah. I, say, I have noticed, and it's something I actually talked to my brother about earlier when I told him you're coming on today. He's like, he's like, ask him about this. And it was... I know when you post up, it could be nothing to do with you at all. Like, oh, Iowa men dominated today or something. And then you just get internet trolls just coming at you. Yeah. And every time I just see you just kill them with kindness. <laughs> How many times do you want to go in and just be like, look, you stupid idiot? Uh, less now than when I was younger. I, I think when, when I was younger, I, I just felt like I had to win the argument mm -hmm. and wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And... I still, I, I love discourse and debate, and I'll do that with somebody respectfully and all day long, but when I recognize it as something where it's not going to be a conversation, I, I do just try to end it with just kindness or, well, thank you for letting me know, yeah. because I can see it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Because um, oftentimes when you actually, actually have discourse, which we're missing too much in this country right now, country, state, city, uh, too many people are just shouting at each other. You don't really learn anything. Nobody's listening. Yeah. And the best of social media, like on my Facebook page, for your example, or on Twitter, there are times somebody will make a point and I'll be, if I'm being open instead of like having my mind closed, which I'm capable of doing too, I'll say, you know what, that, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I need to reconsider. And that's a good thing, but right, it's yeah. just so hard to, to do that. And like many things, like the, the, the older I get, the more I realize I don't know. Yeah. You know, as younger, right, right. I thought I knew everything. And that's kind of a, a variation of the, old, the older I get, the smarter my parents get, you know, that kind <laughs> right. of thing. Yeah, it's, I noticed that. I thought I was right about everything. And someone tried to argue me when I was younger. I'm like, I'll argue you until we go to blows kind of yeah. thing. And now I'm like... Right. This isn't even worth it. Worth my energy. I'm just gonna. There's one one episode we put out of the show on. Uh, it was on Facebook. Somebody had commented. On. It was like, I don't know what they said. Called like, like you guys look like a bunch of morons or something. I don't know what <laughs> the guy said. Something. And Cody's like, yeah. Screenshot and said to me, he's like, he's like, I'm about to light this guy up. I said, just ignore him. Yeah. yeah. It's like that's what they want. Just yeah. ignore him. Best thing to do. And then just tell me everything you're gonna say to him, and then we'll be good. <laughs> that was really good advice. Yeah. It, it, it it's, it's hard to do though. Extremely. But. That is, uh, that, that happens once in a while where I can see that what so, somebody is saying something to me that's so outrageous that what they want is, is for me to respond in the most public way possible because then there are more people that see it. Yeah. Right. Um, and I mean, like, like this weekend, I was, when I was, this past weekend, I was doing an event with, with Lance Armstrong, oh, wow. and it was a reminder of... I, we were on this topic of trolls and hate and all that stuff, but I was thinking oh, I, I've got a decent social media follower uh, following. And I looked him up; he has like more than three million Twitter followers, yeah. and four million Instagram followers. I was like, it's all relative. Yeah, you know, it, it all depends. But like somebody locally might target me as being somebody. If I can get this guy to push back on my point of view then more people see it, there are more arguments, and then I'm getting my opinion out there more. Yeah. So you're right, sometimes it is hard to recognize when it is a troll versus somebody who really wants to have a discussion. But I love the debates, I love the discourse. Yeah. I, I just don't, I, I don't want any more of the people that just want to shout their opinion at me and they're not open to what I have in, to say in right. response, because you can't, you right. don't learn anything that way, and you don't advance anything that and that's, way. And that's exactly why I'm the voice of reason on the podcast. Yeah, Marshall's, yeah, Marshall's yeah I told you. Like, <laughs> that's ignore. what everybody You're told right. me. Everybody yeah. warned me. Ahead of time. <laughs> um, so you mentioned earlier, because we're rolling to our sponsors real quick for the first commercial break here, uh, Bebop's. Great burger. Great burger. What's your go-to at Bebop's? 
Uh, uh, gosh, I I get the uh, single with everything but mayo. Okay. Yeah, loaded. I also love the chili. Okay. The chili's yeah. underrated. The chili's fantastic. At, at Bebop's. I'm I not even, a huge chili fan. I like the chili I a lot. even sometimes, I'll go get the chili, and I'll bring it home, and I'll make chili dogs with it. Oh, chili's delicious. We go to Bebop's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, in fact, we've talked about Bebop so much on our radio show <laughs> that at one point, the managers just sent, sent over a bunch of coupons for us to give to listeners. Yeah. Just to oh, give nice. out. So we've done that. I kept a few myself, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll That's good. It. And uh, Diet Pepsi, not Coke products. <laughs> so so well, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Like, you're one or the other. Have you, um, have you had the ranch at Bebop's? Ranch? Yeah. Are you a ranch Ra- fan? Ranch sandwich? or no, no, ranch? Ran- just ranch dressing, like the ranch. Oh, no. That, I, ho- homemade ranch. Really? No, I don't. I don't put ranch on stuff. Okay. Neither do I. But yeah, that's a. I've there d- are a lot of people in Iowa who do that. Every fight they put on everything. Yeah. They'll fight you. Yeah. Well, Bebop says a thing called the ranch challenge. Oh, what what do you do? So, uh, Neil, their uh, their boss man down there. I was talking to him earlier. We did this with Ed and Willie, a couple other people. They donate a hundred dollars to a charity of your choice if you take a shot of their ranch. Oh wow. Okay. Lucky Lee. Oh God damn it! I got it. shots of ranch from Bebop's for everybody. Oh, man. Cody absolutely hates ranch. So you, any charity you want. Okay. You don't, and you don't have to do it, Keith. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, do I have to do the whole thing? No, I've never, I, compl- I've never completed the whole do. thing. If you don't do the whole thing, Cody will do the rest no, in order for your true. charity to get the $100. Well, I want, the, I want a charity to have the money, but I don't, I don't <laughs> want to throw up on your microphone. <laughs> we'll pretend you drank the whole shot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you, you do you have a charity in mind? Special Olympics. Okay. Special Olympics. Okay. So Bebop's will donate $100. To the Special Olympics, courtesy of Keith Murphy, and we'll get all I that stuff here so later. Much. I should have known. All right, yeah. cheers to cheers. the Special Olympics uh, and Bebop. Cheers. cheers, yes. Uh, cheer, yeah. Cheers. Doing the Ted Lasso, go down first. So. Mm. <laughs> oh <laughs> <That's> man! <laughs> See, I don't I, mind it, but I had more of that than I thought I would. <laughs> Fantastic no, ranch. If you, if you love ranch, it's uh, fantastic ranch. But $100 to the Special Olympics, thanks to Bebop's. Thank you, Bebop's. Am I looking at the left or the right? The, right in the, the middle, middle yeah. the high one? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bebop's. Also, um, one more sponsor real quick. Uh, new, uh, new local t-shirt company in town. <laughs> yeah. um, for those who don't <laughs> like swearing, it's F Average Be Legendary. Otherwise, it's Fuck Average Be Legendary, but they put the little asterisk on the U. Oh, you know? okay. So they have t-shirts. They have, uh, uh, what are those? We got tumblers. Tumblers, thank you. And uh, you guys bags. are just rolling in sponsors. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to. We're trying to get... Uh, we're trying to get a Murph and Andy level. Which, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're trying to get... Hey, you know what you did? You cut out the middleman. That's <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah. Or iHeartRadio's getting none of this money. <laughs> Unless they want to pick us up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can check them out That's online. Right. F-A-B-L-D-S-M.com. They have the black and yellow. Go Hawks on the back ones. Yeah. They have the red and yellow. Or is it red and yellow? Is that the technical It's technical. It's Cardinal and gold. Yeah, Cardinal and gold. Go Clones on the back. They have those online. F-A-B-L-D-S-M.com. Check them out. Quick word from both of them. We'll be right back with Murph. Where's the best place in Des Moines to get a burger, fries, and a chocolate shake? Bebop's Big Tasty Burgers, Hot Crispy Fries, and Great Chocolate Shakes. So why do you come to Bebop's? The burgers are fresh and fast, and it tastes great. I like the pork fritters and chicken sandwiches. Where's the best place in Des Moines to get a burger, fries, and a chocolate shake? There's only one place we go. Bebop's. Bebop's. Better than good. Fuck average, be legendary. Not only is it a brand, it's also a state of mind. Check them out online at fabldsm.com. Fuck average, be legendary at fabldsm.com. Mm, that's a tasty burger. Uh, yeah, that's a good burger. Is that Pulp Fiction? So, yeah, it is Pulp Fiction. That's a <laughs> um, tasty burger. Mm, mm. Have you seen Pulp Fiction, Cody? Of course. Okay, well, I didn't know. Growing up before I'm not God, Tiffany. I don't know if you guys had TVs or not. <laughs> we did. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're tube TVs. Too. Oh, yeah. That works. <laughs> Uh, big thanks to uh, fabldsm.com. Uh, check them out. Get some great gear. Also, Bebops.com. We're, we're back on. I don't. I, <laughs> no, I oh, can't follow this. We're, we're back. back. Yeah, we're quick. Oh, okay. We're in uh, out. Sorry, we didn't give you the. Oh, yeah. We need I, Andrew Downs here to. Yeah. Yeah. Give, yeah. Hey, I learned, you, you have to point to me or. or <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I, I have a red Wayne shiny Rose light. <laughs> I learned that was a thing yeah. when you're watching Wayne Rules as a kid. He's like five, four. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how I learned great that was a thing. 
Uh, Andrew so, Downs, that's a, dude, that's a good guest we should have on sometime. Okay. Andrew Downs, uh, so when I worked at 107.5. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, you got the voice for it. Andrew was starting there. He's got the, he I, got the face for radio. And then sure. I had left because I didn't think there was any money in radio. So mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to do the FM side. Literally no money in FM side unless you're Ryan Seacrest. AM side, great. Fantastic. Yeah. And Andrew came in. He was a hungry <laughs> kid. He just wanted to learn everything. So we were teaching him stuff. And then I quit. And then next time I turned on the radio and then he's just running kegs. And I'm like, yeah, he's the program Andrew, director man, now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Andrew's he, fantastic. And his wife, Judy, is. I've known her for a long time. Yeah, they're Great gosh, people. they're 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 just a wonderful couple, and you you should have him on. He he's interesting. He's, yeah, well, and he's, he's fantastic. He's got a lot of interesting things to say, including the time two years ago he lost his job and was handed a box and had to leave. Yeah, and, we had Ross Peterson yeah. on. Yeah, he, uh, we, we had <laughs> a whole conversation about, about it. it was, it's very fascinating to, to hear that side of it. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's so a couple we, of days we won't forget. We had uh, Ed Wilson on probably six months ago now. God, why don't you have him on a third time? It's all you're talking to me about is Ed. Well, I wanted to ask you. That's fair. <laughs> okay, I love Ed. You guys, he had just gotten back from Vegas with you and Willie. Oh, boy. What was that like? It was so much fun. Especially being the extroverts, Willie and Ed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to oh, say. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm definitely extroverted when I'm comfortable around the people I'm with. Okay. Right. You know, like that, like that group. Um, like Willie's wife described me as a well-behaved toddler, <laughs> which, I, Jenny's which I thought was a really because like a couple days into Vegas, she's like, you're like a well-behaved toddler, <laughs> That's funny. Uh, which kind of showed both sides of it. But it, we had so much fun there because Willie's so funny. Jenny's funny. Yep. Um, uh, Angela, my Jenny, yep. uh, everybody's funny. And then Ed and Ed and Willie and then Ed. You turn him loose in yeah. Las Vegas, and it's just a pleasure like a, to watch. Yeah, it's like the original version of The Hangover. Yeah, it yeah. is. There, there, there may have been a. You hangover. guys are just out there looking for White Doug on the rooftop somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, so this part of the show, we like to kick into a little segment we call the Blitz. Okay. Somebody's gonna come and hit me like a linebacker. <laughs> Correct. All right. Hot, hot, hike. <laughs> It's a blitz. It's, it's a blitz. It's, it's a blitz. Yeah, it's a blitz. Let's go. Uh, so, the blitz, Co- it's Cody's week to ask. He'll ask you a couple yeah. rapid fire, or like five or six rapid fire questions. Then okay. he'll ask me. We'll compare answers, see who wins. Winner just gets the, you know, pride of the winner show. Winner gets another, right. sh- another shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, the winner gets his last shot, of, yeah. last shot of Bebop's Ranch. Is yeah. Winner Chili gets. from Bebop's. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah, I think so. All right, question one. What's a better part of the news, sports or weather? Oh, it's sports. Um, sports is, is escapism. It's the entertainment part of the newscast. It's usually not depressing. <laughs> I, mean, I, I worked in news for a while and got out of there quickly. And weather, even though, like, Ed, he's right the overwhelming majority of the time, but yeah. nobody remembers that. They only remember when, when it's you, wrong, right? Yeah, especially if they've been caught in the rain <laughs> yeah. or something like that so it's uh that's a that's a tough gig the the web so sports okay question two what is more likely you to beat Jen, or blanche wiggins in a race or beat up jesse tuggle <sighs> oh man uh first time i ever lost a race <laughs> was to was to a girl um, I mean, I don't mean the first time I ever lost to a girl. I had won every race I'd ever been in. And then I was in eighth grade and I raced Blanche Wiggins and she was a great athlete, but she beat me and it was very humbling because I realized I wasn't always going to win every race. Jesse Tuggle uh, had a really good career with the Falcons. Yeah. Some people may not remember I him, but he led I remember tackles. His name, but I, yeah. I looked him up and I remembered him a little bit. He was a really good football player. and We went to the same college together. And played uh, played for a short time as a tackling dummy for Jesse Tuggle. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's more likely that I get into doping and somehow work up enough speed. Is it now? Or are we going right back now, in right time? Now, no, right right now, now. Right now. It's a better chance I beat Blanche Wiggins in, in a race because I don't. I haven't seen Jesse in a long time, but I feel like he still could kill me <laughs> like in five seconds. Now, he hurt you during practice. He didn't come out and punch you or anything. No, like no. He was a really nice guy. Okay. You know, like sometimes the, the guys who hit the hardest yeah. and are just the biggest badasses or the nicest guys. Yeah. He's just a nice guy. But, yeah, he, he made me realize I'm not going to 
be a great football player okay. anymore. I'm, All right. This career is coming to an end. <laughs> Question three. What is the best award you've ever won? Uh, best award I've ever won. I, I think, um, God, first of all, any awards are kind of self-indulgent. You know, it, yeah. it's always a little bit awkward to talk about. I mean, and there's, there are times I, I, I probably feel like I did something good here and I'm proud of it. And, there, you know, there might not be any awards for that. And there are other times there probably somebody else deserved the award. So, yeah. you know, any talking about any award is a little bit self-indulgent. But the county where I went to high school, my parents loved it and they, they loved uh, everything about it. And they they put me in the Hall of Fame there in the county. Oh, nice. And my parent, you know, my, it just meant a lot to the family. Okay. So it was so nice. You get the, hall, the Hall of Fame, okay. Yeah, because when you, <laughs> if you win an award, it, if you win an award and the only person it means anything to is you, mm -hmm. that's really, that's kind of like you end up sitting there alone and you, yeah. your bed as you're dying holding <laughs> your awards, like, but I won these awards. <laughs> but the, if you win an award and it means more to, Someone people else, that you yeah. care about or the someone you love then that's probably the award that should mean the most because uh somebody you love is proud of you for it and that makes you feel better than the award okay. itself i think okay. All right. in a I, I know it's supposed to be called the blitz way too long <laughs> no, let's move it along you're please sure what award it was. yeah in a food eating contest what food could you definitely beat marshall eating in you guys, are, you guys are eating the same food. What me, food would it be you. that you could definitely beat him in? Pickled eggs. Oh, yeah. yeah I, agree. Yep, I agree with that one. I, I, <laughs> you uh, love pickled I, eggs? I start every day with two pickled eggs. Seriously? Yep, every day. I, okay. I, I, I drink coffee, and then I have two pickled eggs. And my wife, Jenny, it's, it's one of the indulgences. She doesn't like it in our kitchen. It's around the corner where you can't see it. <laughs> But like at least once a week, Big she'll say, jar. I can't believe that you have that damn jar of eggs here in my <laughs> nice kitchen. Because she remodeled this kitchen. Yeah. It was her dream. It's a beautiful kitchen. And this one indulgence of love over here is this <laughs> jar of pickled eggs. And you know those long bar spoons, you know, like you stir mm, a drink yeah. with? She keeps it. It's, there's like a little special container she's got. It goes in there. So I open it up. I dig down in. I get my two eggs in. I have to put it back in this deal. <laughs> and I do that. Screw the cap back on. And uh, I can order. It comes. The, the jar I get has 50 eggs in it. And, and that lasts me a, a, like a little less than a month. So I keep them coming in. So I should just send those to Jenny for next Valentine's Day. Just a jar of pickled eggs. Oh, not, I wouldn't send them to her. Uh, she wouldn't think they're a gift for me. Uh, so, yeah, like, did you ever see Cool Hand Luke where he, yeah. Oh, yeah. he, he had to eat eggs? He ate 50 hard oh, eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. But those weren't pickled eggs. <laughs> I, I'd make a run at maybe 10, but not 50. All right. And last question. How do you know that you're getting old? Uh, I think it's when um, people that are clearly not what I would consider young anymore come up to me and, and tell me a story about how they watched me as a kid. Okay. I mean, that's just an immediate, whoa. Because right. I'm not talking about somebody who looks like they're in their teens or their 20s, yeah. but somebody who's sometimes standing there with like their middle school age kids. Okay. I remember you from Channel 5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that's that's kind of when it, when it hits me because I'm always surprised by that because the uh, years fly by. I apologize. I have one more question, actually. How dare you? What is the toughest position to play in all of sports? Oh, the the toughest position to play. I think it's uh, I think it's goalie in soccer, um, because there's so much pressure there. Yeah. Or goalie in hockey, either one of those. But when it, especially when a game is tied and then it comes down to penalty kicks or penalty yeah. shots, any kind of goalkeeper. Like anytime I watch those guys, I feel I don't understand how they're not just in the fully stressed position yeah. the entire time. Yeah. Okay. And to be like this is way before your time, but like in 1980, the miracle on ice, when Jim Craig is just stopping all these shots over and over again against the more talented Soviet team, it was that's how that's a big reason we won. 
but the pressure that was on him constantly, yeah. especially as the U.S. took the lead and he had to keep holding that lead or in soccer, you know, just one goal can win it. Yeah. Can win a World Cup That's on one of, goal. A lot of yeah. area to cover. Yeah, and in some of these countries, you know, you let that goal go by, they kill you that night. <laughs> so that's more yes. pressure. Yes. <laughs> All right. No soup Keith, that's been your that's been the blitz. Marsh, you ready? I'm ready. All right. What's the better part of the news? Sports or weather? You know, I would tend to agree with the sports because there's no lying involved. There's no lying involved. <laughs> but I do enjoy the weather because I'm like, ah, oh, please be at least 40 this week. <laughs> yeah, this time of year. You know, and I'm excited. And then, you know, in the morning time, I wake up, Jerry Ann's got a little pep in her step, and I'm like, dude, it puts me in a good mood. The, the weather <laughs> is more important because yeah, it is, it is, it is, it's like the main draw of people yeah. watching. And, and at least in Iowa because they want to know. And it's yeah, probably an know. unpopular opinion of me living in Iowa where we don't have any professional sports teams. I could care less about most local sports. To be honest, and the sports cover a lot of local stuff. Yeah, like, that's I, I that's our lifeblood. That's how know, we stay. That's what I'm saying. I don't know yeah. a lot of the players involved and stuff, so I'm like we talk about. It, I'm like, uh, what's the weather? See, when I when I started my career, you would talk about you would do the national and local sports together, right. but then you know ESPN came along, and then the explosion of cable and now websites. It's like there's a thousand places you can get your NFL coverage. Right. So it, it's like I I need Hawkeye, Cyclones, yeah. high school, uh, right. you know, Wolves, Wild, Barnstormers, uh, Buccaneers. That you got to give me That's the local point. stuff. So. Yeah. It's hard to find like high school sports yeah. and stuff. Because during the day, like I listen to all national, like Colin Coward and stuff, and then I listen to you guys, and I listen to Ross, and after that, I'm back to national sports. So well, Ross and Chris, those guys are nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're I enjoy just the entertainment value. Yeah, I. I, I expect the FCC to shut that show down. Those guys are crazy. <laughs> um, Marshall, can you beat, or what's more likely for you to do? Beat Blanche Wiggins in a race or beat up Jesse Tuggle? I, d I don't know either of these people. <laughs> I g take a guess. Um, <laughs> well, I just boxed on the Oculus yesterday, so I'm going to go with beat up. Okay. okay. I had a third round knockout on easy level. <laughs> on easy level. And I was exhausted, but I figured I went three rounds, I'll probably be okay. Okay. You, you may want to look up Jesse Tuckle. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact, I ran track with Lolo Jones in high school. I was behind her most of the time. All the but time. But we ran together. On the same race? In uh, practice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Could you beat her in a... a no. No? no. Not, not even straight up sprint? Couldn't no. beat her in a math no. contest. <laughs> it, Maybe at that. Her, her, her senior year at, uh, at Roosevelt, yep. one of the most fascinating things I've seen... She dominated that state track meet so much that, like, all uh, all other high school athletes, not all of them, but many of them were coming up and getting her autograph. Yeah. Like another high school, you know, another yeah. high school student. They were like asking her to sign stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think people, some people knew. Yeah. Yeah, and she, and by the way, she's either about to or has turned forty. Yeah, she's a uh, she. She would have just turned because she was one grade above me. So you're so 39? I'm 38. I'll be 39 this year. So she'll okay. Be, so she's either going to be 40. That's one of those things when, because uh, we're looking up when she's trying to make this year's Winter Olympics team yeah, and she didn't make it. Yeah. The bobsled. But it, it said like one of the things probably working against her was her age. Like she's nearly 40. And like and Lolo Jones is near. There's another. She's still that's how you know you're getting old. Like old. She's still in fantastic shape. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Probably better shape than we are. Oh, combined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, question three. What's the best award you ever won? Um, well, I won Class Clown my senior year. But the best award I ever surprise, won surprise. was when I worked at Clear Channel Radio. I won the MVPT, Most wow. Valuable Part-Timer. Most Valuable what? Most Valuable Part-Timer. Part-Timer. I assume it's because Joel McRae didn't want to pay me more money, so he gave mm -hmm. me this award. But I was cool with it. I, was, I, still, I still have the award. That's a pro move by management fantastic. right there. <laughs> I, lo I love Joel, hey, for the record. I, I think he's a fantastic person. We don't have any more money. Let's give this guy an award. Yeah. And dude, I got the award. Hey. I was like, oh, my God. I called my mom. I was like, Mom, I got, we got an award at a Christmas party this year. I was so happy about it. <laughs> then I thought, like, 10 years later, I'm like, that was cheap money. What, what would you rather win, that award or a Spoonie? Oh, I have won a Spoonie before. Oh. The Dark Side of the Spoon Awards. That's our award. Yeah. Our I, I have uh, – finish the blitz but i i actually have because i was thinking just in terms of broadcasting but i have an award i'm actually more uh, much more proud of and okay. uh, i got a little story with that that keep that in mind we'll, uh, maybe we'll maybe right after the blitz. that's a tease uh, <laughs> yeah, teasing head coming yeah. up later 
in this the, broadcast. On the 745 News. Fox News at 9. Um, what's the toughest position to play in all of sports? Well, I wasn't going to say goalie, but I can't, really? co- I can't copy the answer. Yeah, great minds. So I'm going to go with a field goal kicker in NFL because those guys catch all the flack. It, until that guy from the Bengals came along. Well, like, that I, guy's the coolest guy ever. He, it's never even left or right. It's right down the middle, yeah. and then he stays out and, and watches so the halftime. <laughs> what yeah. oh, what that are was you going to awesome. coach him on? Yeah, when I saw him, he's not even in the locker room with the team. He's out there just I would be. It's like, have you seen me miss? Don't worry about me. I got this. The Bengals swag. In an eating contest, what food could you beat Murph in? Chili dogs. Chili dogs. Chili dogs all day. Pickled eggs. choke after the first one. No, I got that got that heartburn taken that, care of. That is, a, that is a danger. Like, it's yeah, yeah. right right the no, I got, size. I got it stretched out. <laughs> okay. I'm good now. All right. Chili dogs. Um, and last question. How do you know you're getting old? <laughs> uh, well, I told you this earlier. Uh, whenever I put jeans on, I hate it now because I always forget to zip my zipper up because I've just been wearing, like, jogger sweatpants everywhere now because yeah. they're so comfortable, too. And I'm like, this guy can be comfortable. They look nice. I don't have to worry about if I zipped or not coming out of the bathroom. Yeah. That's how I know I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's been your blitz. When you Second. go to the pull-on shoes, <laughs> yeah. you'll you'll know for sure. Well, he has Crocs, so, so oh, okay, he's have, already there. Summertime there, yeah. I have Crocs, and yeah. wintertime I tie my laces up so I can just slip them on and off. And I don't have to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie Farrell taught me about the uh, like the stre- the their their laces. But they're made of elastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you put your foot in. Yeah. You turn, turn your sneakers into slip-ons. Yeah. They're, like, they're like the Michael J. Fox ones from Back in the Future, too. Which is <laughs> yeah, electronic ones. That's right. Way too thick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's review the blitz real quick, and then we'll get to uh, Keith's story. Uh, what's the better part of the news, sports or weather? Unpopular opinion in Iowa, but the fact is sports. Yeah, no, that's true. Sports is. Yeah. It's a feel-good story. Uh, who can you beat in a race or a fight? You'd have no chance for just Tuggle. Well, to be fair, I, I, I have no chance at a race either. I don't know who Blanche Wiggins is, but I'm going to give that to Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Tuttle? I'm going to Google this. Tuggle. Right. Jesse Tuggle. Tuggle. Yeah, two Gs. Was he, for the, yeah, look him up. Play the Falcons and yeah, he had, someone else maybe, I think. Yeah, he made, he made the Pro Bowl with the Falcons. Yeah. Okay. Um, Linebacker. What's the best award you ever won? You said the Hall of Fame. Yeah, which is like the, the ultimate. County, county, not, not the baseball <laughs> or football. Hall of Fame is still the epitome yeah. of awards. So. One, one small county and out of the thousands <laughs> in America. And you said class clown. So we're going to go well, no, with. No, that's an MVPT. Yeah. So we're going to give that award to, to Joel. Yeah, yeah. That's a good so one. Keith wins this one. Two to, two to one. Um, toughest position to play in all the sports. Uh, I'm going to go with. Field goal kicker on this one. All I, right. I, I agree with what you say, but I think there's more pressure. Like, there's uh, so many people watching. I, think, field I, I don't know. I think it's equal pressure, but I don't know that well, the I guy. Goalie, so. People still remember the guy from the Giants that missed it in the Super Bowl. Uh, from from the Bills, Norwood uh, or Bills, yeah, Norwood, yeah, yeah, Scott Scott, Norwood. Nor- yeah. yeah. It, in this in this country, yeah, kicker. There's just so much more. Yeah. But look at the ratings for the Super Bowl. Oh I mean, yeah, we, there's nothing rating. we don't. Well, there's nothing we watch more than the Super Bowl, or than NFL. Yeah, football is crazy. The popularity of it. So it's two to two. Uh, in a in a eating contest, what food? You said chili dogs. You I've seen you choke on multiple hot dogs. Yep. Yeah, before <laughs> is this some is this like surgery, a party trick? I had I had uh, esophagus <laughs> issues. I had to have issue uh, surgery and take medicine for it. How dare you point out my my physical flaw? <laughs> Well, that's the face, country right now. <laughs> do, you, do you think you should pick a food that you had to have surgery to address before? <laughs> yes, exactly. But no, I, I had the surgery so I could eat it. That's how much I love them. That's why I know I'll dominate. <laughs> and as soon as you said pickle, I knew he, would, he wouldn't even test Anything it. Anything so. pickled or pickle-related or just the word pickle gross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did my research. <laughs> Thank you. So Keith's up 3-2. <laughs> um, and the last question, how do you know you're getting old? Keith had multiple examples. Yeah, I just had those. Keith's <laughs> older. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I watched him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keith, you My win the blitz. Was, yeah. He watched me. Yeah. I win. <laughs> He's older. You're older. You uh, win. Well, real quick, we got to head into our sponsors real quick before we go into your story. And then when we come back, we'll give your story. Oh, yeah. Your award. yeah. Uh, are you a hot sauce guy? Love hot sauce. Well, I'm not going to make you take a shot of it. Don't worry. <laughs> Lola's. Uh, Good friend of the show, good friend of, you know, state of Iowa. Everywhere, in everywhere, everywhere in Iowa, now. everywhere in the country. Yeah, now. they just uh, teamed up with Casey's. They got these uh, spicy peanuts and cashews now. I haven't had the uh, spicy peanuts and cashews. I have a couple of these sauces. Do you have at a home. favorite one? 
Uh, let me see what you uh, turn them around. Original. Yeah, we just grab some random ones. Yeah, random ones tonight. Family Reserves are hottest one. I like. I have the uh, the original. And then the. Uh, and the Buffalo. I like the original the most. Serrano. They also have like the. Um, I didn't know there was one that was up a notch. The yeah, up a notch, is, I would the, try. This is the hottest one to have. It's their family reserve. You want to try the finger taste of it? You can. Uh, we got some ranch to watch. We can now. do it on the break, too. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it on the they break. They also have the seasoning. So it'll be yep. like, I can compare it to like a Lowry's. A little Season spicier sauce. Lowry's. They've got Bloody Mary mix, yep. um, salsa now. Yep. Sounds like they're coming out with a couple more ideas. But, but you the, can also get it for free at Bebop's. Just go through the drive thru or when you're going to pick up. Free Lola's pack is a Ask for Lola's. They'll oh, give you some packets. Nice. Yeah. It is, it's all coming together. Is, <laughs> you guys have some good cross <laughs> promotion. Yeah, to come on together. again, Casey's will be a sponsor one, too. Let's one see. hot sauce at a time. Hey, one, but the uh, Casey's peanuts and cashews, fantastic. If you like a little heat with your snack, I do. You know, fantastic snack. I do. And I assume you guys own your house, but if you're ever we looking do. to sell, the Mullen Group from Remax, they can sell your house. They can uh, help you buy a new house if you're looking for something like that. Rates, do all of it for you. I've heard rates are starting to go up a little yeah. bit, so it's a if great time nice to buy. Enough, Sean might come clean it for you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. They're that good. But uh, you can so check them out at uh, the Remax Group under uh, the Mullen. Or, excuse me, Remax Productions under the Mullen Group. Yep. And uh, here's a quick word from them. We'll be right back. More Murph. I got to pee. Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, a generational family recipe using the world's hottest peppers for great flavor. They're vegan, non-GMO project verified, kosher, and all natural. Find them online at lolasfinehotsauce.com. Use promo code ASK8BALL for 10% off your purchase. Are you in the market for buying or selling a home? Get a hold of the best in the business. The Mullen Group at Remax Revolutions. You can get a hold of Sean at 515-306-2028. Again, Remax Revolution. Sean Mullen at 515-306-2028. Ready? Are you ready? Thank you <clears throat> to our sponsors. Thank you, uh, Lola's, and thank you, uh, the Mullen Group with Remax. Yeah. Also, uh, big shout-out to Koa Cantina for letting us in tonight. Uh, it's a nice place. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. 425 Fantastic East. Fantastic drinks. East, East Grand. East Grand. There yep. it is. Yep. Fantastic drinks. Uh, they have food now, too. Yeah, they got awesome food. Great tacos and uh, street corn. Street corn is amazing. Yep. Chips, salsa. Yep. All of it. But uh, I think they won some City View Awards, too. Look like, at it, too. Like Keith Murphy. Best, best yeah. margarita. Tequila. Probably best something to do with tequila. tequila. Some yeah. of the tequila. Gosh, they've got variety here. Yeah, it's a fantastic place. So check them out. Also, uh, yeah, everyone else, Bebop's, F yeah. Average, Be Legendary, Lola's, and uh, the Mullen Group. So we're going to get uh, jump right into Keith's story. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so... Um, you asked me the award I was most proud of, and I was thinking, I think because of the context, uh, broadcasting. But um, when I was a kid, I was uh, I was way too into sports. I mean, in an unhealthy way. And I've been there. <laughs> I, I learned I learned from that, and I uh, and I think my kids in turn learn learn from me. But I was way too into it. I had no perspective, and we were in the. Uh, the local Little League World Series, which was uh, my whole world that we were in this. I was playing for Kiwanis. Do you, okay. you remember when the yeah. sponsors would be like yeah. Rotary, Dairy Kiwanis Queen, Club, Kiwanis, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So I was playing for Kiwanis, and, and we, were, we were in the Little League World Series, and it was best of three. And this was as excited as I've been for everything. And I, uh, the, the crowd at the Little League field, there's a big crowd there and everything, and I went up. And uh, in a key situation in game one, I went up and struck out. And on my way back to the dugout, I slammed my bat to the ground. And our manager, Jim Hutchinson, um, he called me, he took me out of the game, and then he called me uh, up afterwards, called me over and said, um, you're not playing in the next game, you're benched. And I was devastated. I begged. I cried. I made. I tried to make a deal with him. He said, "No, <laughs> you, 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 your bench. You're not playing." And it was uh, kind of like twelve year olds making deals. <laughs> oh yeah, I was. I, and I was. You know, I was a starter. I was one of our key players, and he felt that strongly in making that point. And we we did go on to lose the the, the World Series too, not just because he benched me, but. Uh, the next year, I uh, when I'd strike out, I'd sprint back to the dugout. I'd sprint to. I had been the sorest sport 
And this guy taught me that lesson. And that year, at the end of the year, I won the sportsmanship trophy. Okay. And it was the proudest award I ever won because I knew how far I had come and I had learned a lesson and not that, well, it's probably been 15 years ago. Uh, I got word from my parents that Jim Hutchinson was, was in, in the hospital mm -hmm. and didn't have long left. So I, I, I got to go visit him, this coach, and I got to go see him and tell him thank you for what you did for me, for giving me as a little spoiled brat, a little <laughs> bad sport, for teaching me this lesson that I carried forward the rest of my life. I mean, I still had many lessons to learn, but what a great thing he did for me by taking a principled stand that you're, you're not gonna make an ass of yourself like that yeah. and then play again. You don't throw the bat down. And so many times over the years when I've, when I've seen bad behavior, I've thought, you know, this person needs a Jim Hutchinson. Yep. You know, this person right. needs a correction, yep. um, just like I needed. So one of the things I'm most grateful for in this life is that I, I got to go tell him on his, basically on his deathbed, thank you, uh, you made me a better person. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a really so that's, cool story, Keith. That's my sportsmanship award I love trophy. That. That's, that's fantastic. I saw the um, Andrew Whitmore won the Michael, Michael, or the Walter Payton. Yeah. And he yeah. talks about how the player he went to the Boys and Girls Club and talked to him and the guy runs over to the field and says, you don't remember me, but when I was seven, you came to the Boys and Girls Club and you sat there afterwards and you talked to me. And he goes, I just want to tell you, I made it. I'm in the NFL. Wow. Nice. That is good. That's nice. That, that was a really cool story. Nice. Yeah. You, I mean, so. you don't, that's, that's why, you know, acts of kindness and sometimes acts of discipline, as was the case here, you don't know what impact that's yeah. going to yeah, have. Well, and I had impact somebody in their life. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I still had more lessons to learn on taking sports too seriously, and I, and I learned <laughs> them. But, like, I'm sure there are many teachers, coaches, uh, caregivers, healthcare workers. Like, there's so many people that probably have no idea, like, this one thing mm -hmm. they did on one day went on to impact somebody's <laughs> life in a way that changed them forever. And... If I could have any advice about this, it's like, if you still can, find time to reach out to that person and just say like, hey, you may have forgotten this, but you did this back in the day for me. And that made such a difference. I mean, it makes yeah. it makes somebody feel so good. I mean, teachers, yeah. coaches, those are two that come to mind right away because we all had somebody that did something for us that... Who, who doesn't like to hear you yeah. made a difference in someone's life? Well, that only affected your life. It, I'm sure it affected the long-term your kid's life. You, you yeah. took that oh, lesson yeah. taught them. Yeah, a butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps going. That's awesome. That's a really cool story. I like that. So now you definitely win the Blitz. Marshall, you get a point <laughs> taken away for that. I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I watched him growing up. I, I'm okay <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, uh, back to the old. Back to the old. <laughs> um, um, so we were talking Super Bowl earlier. Uh, I saw you sent Justin. Oh, is it Searchy? 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 Yeah, Justin Searchy. Searchy. I saw you sent him out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a reason you didn't go, or was it just because because he's not necessarily a sports guy for you guys? I uh, no, he he and I do the high school football games yeah, together. Yeah, do that on Fridays. Yep. Right, uh, and he played football at you and I, and played in the NFL for a while. Oh, I didn't know he played in the NFL. Uh, I mean, okay. He was in he he was in uh, uh, practice squads, yeah, and yeah. training camps, still, Seahawks, hey, Vikings. Still made it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I think with his background, Nextar just thought it'd be good to have a player who's played at that level to right. go there. And he covered the the Summer Olympics for us, too. Oh, okay. So that's, when he goes awesome. there, he, he covers it for us and for some other Nextar stations as well. And, right. and uh, just talked to him earlier today, and he, he, uh, he got into the stadium mm -hmm. and uh, spotted a couple of seats. He and his uh, photographer spotted a couple of seats that after the first quarter, nobody was sitting in them. He's like... You don't show up late to the Super Bowl. No. So he sat there. He sat through the ha uh, you know the halftime show yeah, and all that's that. That's awesome. And, yeah, and nice. he loved it. And those, those seats he sat in were worth you know probably ten thousand dollars yeah. each yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. So oh. you've been doing sound off for twenty one years now. Twenty six. Twenty six years. Yeah. So I I think when I was a kid it was you and the round guys, right? Right. Right. So saw him recently for the first time ever at the Funny Bone. He's hilarious. But you've been with Andy Fails now for what? But Fails doesn't do it anymore. He, he doesn't. It's oh. John Sears now. He does the radio show. Uh, it, but oh, okay. uh, the reason it's confusing is Andy still does What's Bugging Andy every oh, week. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, doesn't co-host the show anymore. But that's that's why I still see him on Sound Off. Um, but, yeah, so it was, it was Round Guy for the first six years. 
and then uh, Andy. Oh gosh, I don't know. Probably another twelve. I guess twelve years or so. Okay. And then um, John since then, but Andy has continued to do what's bugging Andy. Okay. Do you have a favorite moment over all those years? Uh, I think it was Sound Off One Thousand. Okay. Um, we did our thousandth show, and we flew Chris Hassel in from. Uh, he was at. ESPN at the time so he flew in and round guy came back nice. and Heather who had done some shows came back and we did some new new sketches and then we uh, we put the best of together best of what we could find because it's a live show so there's a lot of stuff that's just lost in yeah, the ether right. but we put that together and uh, I I worked on all of it and, and editing it and then we all got together at my house and watched it. It was really surprisingly sentimental and yeah. you know, kind of moving. And then <clears throat> as soon as it was done, uh, we all got up, went over to Cooney's and just drank for a while. And that's awesome. it's one of those nights we've all had them where you just, you just wish the night wouldn't end. Yeah. You know, you yeah. just, it's like, you can feel it going and you're like, Oh man, time's going by and I just don't want this night to end. Uh, and uh, of course it does. But lately we've had a lot of Ed Wilson on cause he likes to, Ed likes to have spotlight. Yeah, Yeah, he likes to laugh, and and you can get him to do just about anything. (laughs) But now we have to make sure we don't hurt him, right? Because he's had the had the bad shoulder. he's a bad knee. We got to make sure. I saw him at his dog pool. That's how he knows he's getting old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's how. That's right. Are you gonna get to show two thousand? No, no, no. We're uh, we just passed twelve hundred, so that would be eight hundred to do fifty or so a year. Okay. Um. I, I don't want to be dragged away. Like I'd, okay. uh, I don't want them to be like, oh, God, we, enough. You know, we get it. Yeah. It's uh, time, to, time to move along. I think that, I, th- I think broadcasting and being in the spotlight, sometimes it can have that hold on people where mm-hmm. it's, it is hard to, uh, to exit. Go. Walk away, yeah. Yeah, to walk away. Right. You, it, it's, you know, you, you, you can like the uh, appreciation because it's not fair we talked earlier about you get some of the hate yeah but you also i mean a lot of people work hard and and do a good job at their best yeah but we probably get more compliments and more i like what you do and, yeah. than you should i mean it's not an important job i mean i take it seriously but it's it's right. not important not changing the world kind of no, thing no no i mean it's not important um so during the pandemic there wasn't a lot of sports going on right I will say this, and I don't know if this is something you chose to do or if they wanted you to do to keep you in the mix because you're one top one of the top guys on there or whatever, but every day I always watch the governor's press conference. Halftime, I didn't know what the hell she like meant by anything. Mm-hmm. I'd wait for your breakdowns. <laughs> and then I'd see the breakdown. I'd be like, okay, because we work in the bar industry too. So I worked, I'm like, okay, cool. So we can open up and be open until 10. I get it now. Like I never knew or have <laughs> stuff in general. Like, oh, you can go to Hy-Vee now and not wear a mask, you know, yeah. things like that. Was that something you like wanted to be a part of and do to keep yourself just in the mix, or did the stations like, well, you're a top guy, like you have following, we need you to do more of this? Um, it it was is something I did on uh, on my own and and not by design at all because right. that was my Facebook page, which yeah. is not the stations at all. That's okay. all. That's all my own own deal. I mean, it's it's all uh, you're representing the station right, in right, some right. way, but it's not their page. It's it's my personal page. Um, you know, when I leave, my page will go with me type thing. But um, no, mostly it was just I I just felt uh, useless, you know, like right. I, I didn't have anything to do. I think a lot of us felt this way. Right. And you were like seeing people that were, you know, doing the hard stuff or doing the, the and I just wanted to do something. And a couple of times because I had time on my hands. And as you said, there weren't sports going on. I. I, the two things I would do. One is I would try to put the day's information and in just like little bullet points that a guy like me could understand. Oh, yeah, that's that's why I appreciate because I'm and, like, I don't know what that, these terms mean. So I'd yeah, the back yeah. like, what's Murph gonna say today? <laughs> so I, I, I I did that, and then the other thing I did, I I just started asking people for like, hey, what's something positive that's going on that's coming out of this? And people would send like. You know, a dad would send a photo of him with his daughter. Hey, I'm usually at work now, but, you know, I got to stay home today and we made these photos and they'd send a picture. There'd nice. be a video of, I played wiffle ball in the backyard with my son yeah. and look at this home. So I started posting those positivity videos and pictures, but uh, 
what what happened that I didn't expect is like I don't know after after a few months of this and seven days a week basically I tried to stop yeah and people were really nice about it but they they didn't want me to stop they're like we this is where I and I know this is a small percentage of people but in my world the people were saying like this is where I go to get my information right uh, and I don't want it I don't want any spin on it or I don't want to lean I don't want to I don't want it politicized yeah, I just, just want to know do I need to wear said. a mask yeah you know that kind yeah. of stuff. so I, I did keep doing it for <clears throat> a long time and uh, people still mention it to me which is interesting because yeah. I'm not the guy you would expect to be going to for pandemic information well, yeah 100 percent. that's what I was, I was always just like because Politically wise, we were like, "Oh, I'm not doing this," or "Oh, I'm gonna yeah. do this," and then it was like, "I just want to know what the hell's happening, so I can yeah, decide right. for myself." Type thing. Well, I love the positivity just, boom, right spin there. on it too. That's fantastic. Yep. It 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 really helped me too. I mean, it's just just to be reminded of those things. Like we all have some story like that. Like I, I a couple of things that people find curious. I don't like the taste of water. Like I don't like to drink water. I need it flavored or I need it sparkling. I just okay. don't like tap water. Right. Never have. Um, so I don't like water and I don't really like to go on. I don't like to go for walks. Like I, I just don't like to walk. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I can be kind of lazy like that. But um, one of the things that my wife, Jenny, really enjoyed that I had started to love, too, is we, we just walked everywhere just to get out of the house. Yeah. And we would walk here like to the East Village and we'd walk all over, walk around the Capitol. And it just it, a couple of things gave me appreciation for what a great city this is. Des Moines is an underrated beautiful city. city. Yeah, it's oh, very yeah. beautiful. But you see things so differently when you're walking and especially when there's pr nobody else around. Mm -hmm. So we just, we, you know, we sat places, we sat on benches, we walked around and uh, got in the habit of that. And I've probably given it up more than I should have since then. Yeah. But uh, Times everybody has a, again. a yeah, positive yeah. story. Yeah, I got, got winter will do that. Yeah. Right. We've talked about walking and, and it's like, oh man. <laughs> now when it's negative 12. Yeah, we better drive to Cooties. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Uber back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but Uber back, of yeah. course. Well, I've oh. just got one more question for you. And we like to make this very light, very comedy based. So I would like to know what your most embarrassing moment in broadcasting is. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I think it's. Gosh, the, the, I've had a, a number of ways I've embarrassed myself. I, I think the one that stays with me the most is uh, when I was in Georgia. I got a job I wasn't ready for or qualified for yet, but uh, I was hired partly because I could start right away. And so I, they hired me to be the sports anchor when I was still okay. in college. And um, the station, it was WVGA and Georgia's Channel 44, they had a... Uh, a, a tin roof on the building where the set was. Okay. Uh, my first year I worked there, they didn't even have a teleprompter. So trying to give you an idea of what a juggernaut <laughs> the station was. Right. So no teleprompter, although that ended up being a positive thing because I, I, I learned to be able to exist without the teleprompter. Yeah. But anyway, one more idea of what this station was like. On the, on the weekends, they would move the set and move in the pro wrestling ring. And we would televise live pro wrestling. Not like Hawkeye Cyclone wrestling. Yeah, I like mean, all the top turnbuckles. Or the real, real wrestling. But at the lowest level, where the local guys yeah, oh, come yeah, yeah. in and they've, they've yeah. got their personas. Like, and, yeah, they have like the beaver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a name, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, people in the front row, no. they're eating corn on the cob through a picket <laughs> fence. And so that, that's what it's like. So in the summers there, Tin Roof, Georgia horrible idea it gets really really hot yeah and flies would get in and i was doing the sports cast <laughs> and a fly flew into my <laughs> mouth as i was doing a story on the braves and i i kind of coughed it up like <laughs> and i i don't know if anybody could actually see the fly but what it did was it made me start giggling and <laughs> it, if you ever laughed in church <laughs> or at a place you're not supposed yeah. to, yeah. you can't stop. Yeah. So I'm, I'm laughing, and I just I try a couple of times, but I can't stop. So they eventually go to commercial break. <laughs> and this was, so, I'm the only person, I'm a one-man one sports department. This place was so forgiving. This is the kind of place, like, I thought, I'm, I'm going to lose my job. Yeah. I mean, because this is a, a 21 years old at the time. This is stupid. I can't regain my composure. 
I didn't know how to turn it into a positive or is actually kind of entertaining. I just look like an you just a fool up there just, <laughs> just, just, just laughing and laughing and I couldn't stop. And now when I look back on it, I think, okay, this happens now. That lives forever. Yeah. It's a Oh yeah. It, it's it's a it's a me oh, and I don't yeah. mean because it's me. It could happen in any, anybody yeah. any station in America. If somebody coughs up a fly and can't stop laughing, that's in your Twitter feed. It's in your Facebook <laughs> yeah, it's feed. TikTok. It's on yep. TikTok. Wow. People are starting to do impressions of the fly guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that funny. that was an embarrassing story that ends well because there's no proof it happened. Yeah, and she, I mean there's it doesn't live. That's and hilarious. I think we all can agree we're relieved that there there weren't cameras everywhere during our knucklehead days yeah 100%. for sure for sure um, it's a different world last last thing i got i saw you took your boys to see jackass forever yes were you a fan uh yes i i'd seen the other movies yeah, yeah. and bad grandpa yeah uh was i a fan of this latest one yeah i i was we we la the, it gets kind of a combination uh have you seen it yet oh yeah I saw okay it. Yeah, so yeah. it's a combination of cringe that turns into double over, you know, doubled over laughter. Yeah, I, I, I did that kind. I'd be like, oh, and then next thing you know, I'm yeah. I'm just laughing so hard. I was stunned how much junk nudity there was. There's a lot of yes. male frontal nudity, which I saw today. Chris Pontius, party boy in it. Yeah, now is the has the most male full frontal nudity in Hollywood history. I believe it. Is it all in this movie? or a uh, I, think, I think a combination, but a lot in this movie. I mean, about the time the one guy, uh, uh, you know, flatten it out. Yeah. And then Johnny Knoxville plays paddle ball with Yeah. I, I mean, like, what, what? For those who haven't seen it, the very first thing you see in the movie is full front. Chris Pontius. And it's it, fantastic. I cried And that's how Justin thing. Zimmerman got famous. Yeah. So the, the, that part, like the, the part when I first realized yeah. what the monster is. Yeah. I was like, I can't believe what I'm, and we were, we were with my wife, Jenny, and she's like, oh my God, the, how far is this going to go? And Atlanta. then about that time, everybody starts getting bathed. Yep, and I was yep, like, oh goodness. Went. Yeah, it, it was something. Yeah. But yeah, more, more male frontal nudity than I yeah. needed, but none of it in a That's sexual a, way. I, no, no, not at all. I cried laughing almost the entire movie, so I want to go see it again in case yeah. I missed something. But I was just curious how... Uh, Somebody maybe more mature than I am oh, thought that, that the movie was. Oh no, I, 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 I still I've seen Jeff Daniels empty his bowels into the toilet and Dumb and Dumber. It's still hilarious. A hundred <laughs> times, and I would laugh oh. just as hard. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Right now, I oh. uh, just so I, I love that that kind of humor, and I think the hardest I laughed in that one, in, in Jackass Forever is when the old man who's testing the furniture, testing the bed gets <laughs> launched up into the ceiling. Yeah. yeah, gets launched up into oh, the ceiling. Man. And those poor workers, are, they don't know what to think. Oh, uh, it, yeah, it's good so, stuff. It made, a, it made a small fortune, so we'll yeah. see oh, yeah. more. 10 million to make it, make Minus, 23 million opening weekend. And then 100 million in medical bills over their lifetime. Yeah, probably. So they, they really are fortunate no one has been killed in a stun. I, I don't 100%. know how. And now Johnny Knoxville's wrestling. Johnny Knoxville said he'll never do any more dangerous stunts because he got a brain hemorrhage during well, one of the stunts. From, from the bowl, from, yeah. yeah. From he's not the, that bowl charge him anymore, but she, that that was bad. And he's he looks like he's really in shape. Yeah, he's like he's got to be fifty, yeah, right? I think he's, he's fifty two or something. When I looked him up the other day. Something, yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah, they kind of turned it over to the new guard. For yeah, the yeah, most you can part. tell. Yeah, yeah. Poop, poopies. <laughs> yeah, poop. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta got any poopies in your movie? I'm in. Uh, right. Murph, I appreciate coming on. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Fantastic. Appreciate that. It, it was fun to talk to you guys. Yeah. Thank you for having Check me. Check them out. Uh, sound yeah. off Sundays at eight. Is it eight? Uh, no, no, it's not 10, eight. It's like eleven. It's my o'clock. biggest fan, right? Biggest yeah. sound off fan, right there. <laughs> the uh, news just, gets over, as you know. Sound off uh, Wednesdays at eleven thirty-seven a.m. Right after Rachel. No, Ryan, no. Or Hello, Iowa. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Right after the Price is Right <laughs> on WI. No, no. It's the ten o'clock news. No, Cody. Uh, yeah, it's after the uh, 10 p.m. news on Sunday night. Okay. Yeah. 10 p.m. Sound off. Unless it's football well, season. Well, kind of 10 p.m. Just go yeah. with them on there. Tune in at 10. Watch the news. I game. didn't say Central Time. Yeah, could have been. Yeah, Central Time. <laughs> Cody's like, I only go in for the outdoorsman. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Buck McNeely. <laughs> he's fantastic. Yeah, he's going to just shoot a deer <laughs> in the head. <laughs> well, thanks for joining the show, Keith. We really appreciate it. That's oh, it's good. Thank, thank you for the, the dinner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry that, for the one year harassment Cody getting you on here, but we appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank it's you to fun. Lola's, Bebop's, uh, Coa Cantina, 
Also, uh, F, what is it? F B F A B L D S M. Yep. Fuck average, be legendary, Des Moines. F-A-B-L-D-S-M.com. And the Mullen Group with Remax. Yeah. And we'll uh, see you guys next week. Thanks, guys. <laughs>